I have achieved everything I wanted to with this character and sharing it with these boys will be forever one of the most special experiences of my career. So if it's time, it's time. If it's not, it's not. But at the, at the moment, I don't know. Gosh darn it, Tom. Don't you know the Spider-Man rule? You're supposed to run it into the muck until suddenly you do a Spider-Man movie that is not well received. Yes. And then Sony panics and goes, we need to start over again. We need to reboot this. You're ignoring the blueprint that has been clearly set forth by your coast. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, the interview that I feel like we've been waiting for for centuries. <laughs> Remember me for centuries. Remember that song? Guys, you knew this was coming. Pete, roll that clip. You knew this was coming, Pete. From the get-go, we've been like, I can't wait for an interview with the three Spider-Men. It's here, it's long. It's like 30 minutes in total, I believe. We'll react, comment, break it down. You know how we do. <laughs> Hit that like button. I'm sorry. Thwip that like button. Let's get to it, you beautiful sons of bees. Hi there, I'm Pete Hammond, and happy to moderate this session. I am the only one you are looking at on the screen who has never played Spider-Man, and uh, this is exciting. I, I think it's almost historic. We have the it is historic, the yeah. 20 years of this franchise. Uh, Toby McGuire, who of course started it all with the first three Spider-Men. Hi, Toby. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> The pioneer in this. And then, of course, Andrew Garfield, who carried it on in the next two. Hey. Yep. <laughs> two. Bring him back. And now Tom Holland, who's uh, completed his first trilogy. We'll find out if there's more. <laughs> With Tom Holland right here. Uh, welcome. And wow, uh, I have to say right off the bat, did any of you have any idea that this movie would have the impact that it's had around the globe beyond all expectations, I think, even for Spider-Man. I mean, Tom, did you, uh, you know, having just done the third one now? I mean, I think I, I always knew that this film would be, would be loved around the world. I didn't think it would be quite as massive as it has been. You're crazy. You know, one of my favorite <laughs> things to do at the minute is to go online and watch fans' reactions to you guys coming in, that one scene in particular. I, I, I just, I, I don't think I could ever have imagined it being so well received by, by everyone. Um, so no, I mean, I guess I had an idea that people would love this movie, but in no yeah, way shape or form did I have thought it was gonna be as big as it has been. Uh, and it's been, you know, only the last couple of weeks have I sort of really come back to reality and come home and started to face real world problems. And it feels like we've been on some sort of really weird dream it feels really strange. See, that's why we love Tom Holland, because I feel like as fans, it's kind of been that way for us as well. Spider-Man, for some reason, felt like the world's back to normal and it's more exciting than ever. <laughs> Everything's optimistic now. <laughs> yeah. And then suddenly things started getting crazy in the world again after Spider-Man came out because we were out of our Spider-Man bubble after a certain point. And then, yeah, him talking about checking out fan reactions. That's a big part of why I think Tom Holland's so relatable and lovable. Just yesterday, I was watching reactions up from the theater of Andrew Garfield catching MJ, I would just get so much nipple chills just from watching those videos <laughs> oh, again. Yeah, yeah. Tommy. Toby and Andrew, I have to ask you though, how did you get involved? I mean, when they came to you, I can't imagine Toby, they said, oh, we want you to do Spider-Man again. <laughs> He's probably gonna what talk. He's probably gonna talk. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I went and had a meeting with um, uh, Amy and uh, Kevin, Amy Pascal and Kevin Feige. And, and had talked about, they sort of just, you know, teased it. I think Amy was like, we'd love to talk to you and you you know what this is about. Um, <laughs> and I was like, okay, sure. Uh, <laughs> let's have a chat. And I think this is Amy, you're like, no, I don't Amy know. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I like, what? Maybe you could just give me a, a little bit of information, but I don't know. I was, I gotta say, I was intrigued immediately, like, in in that conversation the intention the kind of love and celebration of these movies and what it meant i think to amy and kevin was was apparent and to me when artists or you know people who are um steering the creative process have a kind of authentic genuine 
intent of celebration and love. It, it, it just yeah. was so apparent in both of them. Shines to the movies, that, yeah. I don't know. I just wanted to join that. And um, I'm a big fan of Tom and those movies and Andrew. So it was definitely intriguing. But but yes, I was also going, well, what what are we going to do? Um, and and that was a bit mysterious. I did appreciate what was shared, but it was really about getting together with these people and revisiting, you know, what what was part of my history and, and getting a chance to like come together. And um, there, there are personal things too, which are um, kind of resolutions or um, a way to revisit. And, and um, I'm not quite sure how to put it. It's just, just to get to get back into that. And I don't want to say like close the chapter, but revisit and have certain <laughs> resolutions um, and, and just join in this like loving creative spirit. He said, I don't want to say close the chapter. <laughs> I don't want to allude to certain things that may have been reshot. <laughs> or things that perhaps might be upcoming at upcoming. some point or other future talks of the three of them coming together. But absolutely, man, I think we all kind of get where he's coming from, especially for both Toby and Andrew. They both had sequels in development and they both got scrapped. Mm -hmm. And this was their chance to at least put a stamp on it and still leave the door open for, you know, the possibility of coming back for something again down the road there's not as much of that longing anymore for oh man but we never got to see them return what again. could have been yeah know. and then it got to pay off in this way so i think that's what you're trying to say toby mcguire <laughs> <laughs> you're the toby translator <laughs> for this whole video what about for you andrew i thought well with tick tick boom and with the eyes of tammy Faye, uh we've seen a lot of andrew garfield in fantastic performances this year alone when I saw this movie, I wasn't expecting a third one that, on that. And amazing uh, to see you back in in these uh, in this costume <laughs> and, and this franchise. So, so for you, what was what was it like going back? Well, I was just waiting to see if Toby was going to do it, and if Toby was going to do it, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I was like, well, I have no choice. You know, he. I, <laughs> I follow Toby to the, to the ends to the ends of the earth. I'm a lemming for Toby. Um, no, I. But that was a, a sincerely a big part of it. You know, when when I was approached about it, and and again, in a, in a similar way to what Toby was saying, it was like, oh, the intention feels very pure here. It actually feels like a great creative idea and yeah. a great creative story. It wasn't like they were just asking us to come and say hi and then leave again. Come and but make us money. Have us have our presence being in service to Tom you know, being in service to, to, to Tom's journey and, mm -hmm. and where, where he is as Peter Parker and how I, I love the destiny feeling of um, the multiverse expanding in this film. And actually that without Toby's Peter and Andrew's Peter being present for Tom's Peter at this very moment, he may not become the Peter Parker that he's supposed to become. I love that point. there's... And, God, and, he gets it. That, that maybe he'll, he would have lost Born his girlfriend this, and that maybe he would have gone down a, a darker path if if Toby hadn't have given hadn't have given um, him that that kind of mentorship moment, that better angel kind of moment. <laughs> yes. So it was those things. I get chills thinking about it even now. Um, so, so for me, it was like... And it's the same kind of um, judgment call with any script or any film. It's like, is this a story worth telling? And do I want to work with these people? And, they, and it was a big double kind of capitalized yes. And then it exceeded my expectations because the way that Tom and Zen Zendaya and Jacob are as a trio is just like a kind of magical heaven kind of friendship. And then <laughs> so welcoming of me and Toby into the into the gang. And then the way that Tom works with John Watts and, and Kevin and Amy, it's like, it's very open, it's very free. And uh, so, so Toby and I felt not only welcomed, but actually given lots of permission to to play and to yes. to kind of find find our way into being of service to to Tom's Tom's story yeah. in this way, and it was just a kind of joyful yeah. few weeks that we all got to spend together, which far ex I, I you know it could have been an absolute not like you, you you kind of think well 
getting three Spider-Men together could, could go one of two ways. And uh, I think it's a testament to the to these guys that, that it, it went it went the way that it went, which was a brotherhood, which is just beautiful. A lot of what Andrew has said here has been you know echoed in other sentiments of other interviews that he's already done. I love what he talks about because he really seems like he he just gets what they were doing. Yeah. I don't want to sound presumptuous. I'm going to about <laughs> <laughs> Toby McGuire specifically really? because I sometimes I scratch my head and go, did he really watch those Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland <laughs> before? You could just tell me I'm a big fan, you know, and, and granted he's generally more, you know, reserved than Tom Holland and Andrew Garfield, generally speaking. But like when Andrew talks about it, I'm like, he just really seems like he gets the intricate depth and nuance and also the grander scale of the marketing and everything like that. Yeah, you know it seems I mean? like he's invested in Spider-Man this whole time. <laughs> yeah, 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 the so well before Toby and after. <laughs> And it's so heartening to hear just that 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 thing that's shown through the movie, like you said, a brotherhood of service, of joy and celebration, like all that shines through. And and, and he is the perfect embodiment of all that, Andrew mm -hmm. Murfield. I have to say, uh, Toby, I just read this morning Sam Raimi just praising this re reunion of all three of you are the, uh, you know, putting you all on the screen together and what it was in this film. I mean, he loved it, which is high praise coming from the original director here, I think. How sweet! I haven't I haven't seen that. Yeah, just came out this morning. Someone asked him <laughs> one of the trade papers, and uh, he just had Honest high press. High press. Talk to you. It's not much. Working with them. I, I'm wondering, did you have any kind of rehearsal time to get used to this idea, or did you just jump in and uh, you're all in your uh, Spider-Man uh, motif here? Yeah, I, it was uh, it was daunting. This is so it was trippy. Very daunting. I know. We, we were a long way into shooting before you guys showed up. You know, we were maybe three months into principal photography, and wow. you know, the the date wow. of the other Spider Mans are coming was etched on my calendar, and I was getting closer and closer and closer. And you know, the closer and closer I got, the more and more nervous I was. And then as soon as I met you guys in Atlanta, I realized I had nothing to be nervous about. But on our first at our first rehearsal, I had asked Jacob and Zendaya to come with me to just kind of be there <laughs> as like my support system. Like, I'm going to go meet these guys. My I'm gang. Really nervous about it. <laughs> my posse. I have to read the scene and I don't know how this is going to go because we're all playing the same character and we all have to bring our own kind of heart and soul into this. And, you know, it means a lot to them and it means a lot to me. Does it mean the same? So Jacob and Zendaya were there on that first day. But I think it was really strange and almost a little unfair how they had us put the suits on and then just jump around in front of a camera together. Like that was one of the most bizarre experiences of my oh, life. Was that the first of they shot? Jacob and Zendaya were there for that to support me. But it was an amazing experience. And from day one, it was a roller coaster that I didn't want to get off. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. And like you said, Andrew, like it was so collaborative. It was so playful. You know, from you cracking Toby's back to, to you coming up with the idea of pointing at us, like it was all stuff that we came up with what? one day. Yeah. Um, and it was just a lot of fun to be able to play with three guys in Spider-Man suits. It was a, a strange experience, but one that I won't ever forget. Yeah, I believe what Andrew Garfield said was that he actually came up with the idea one day uh, with the part in the lab. Because uh, the there's also the awesome. point on the, the Statue of Liberty when they do that. Yeah. You know, like twice in the movie. And I think what's so great about like hearing what they're all saying is, you know, Andrew earlier said this could go one of two ways. One of the two ways could have been just a bunch of ego. But I get a lot of sincerity, a lot of genuine, like he says, brotherhood amongst them that they left ego at the door and oh, they yeah. just worked. But yeah, because it's like the ultimate olive branch from a studio too so it's got to feel like way more than a job but like an actual just life moment for these guys yeah how did you guys keep this a secret so well <laughs> I, I know there's all that pressure on you but i mean it really was a well-kept secret and that's a hard thing to do in the age of social media it's not a well-kept secret <laughs> yeah what, 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 what news did you not read <laughs> You are the worst of it though, Andrew. You because you were doing press for months. <laughs> yeah, like I'm out there, man. I'm like out there. And everyone's like, why is Andrew Garfield on a press tour just denying Spider-Man? Like the other two films. I'm like, dudes, like, like, look at this stuff. So yeah, no, I definitely think I had the hardest time. Yeah. The worst part of it, yeah. Rust into the world just like coincided with uh, having to lie, having to lie. For the sake of that audience reaction, I think. So, and I know, you know I, it's, I equate it to like, you know, when you're organizing a surprise birthday party for someone that you love 
and they keep telling, they keep saying, mate, just tell me I hate surprises. You know, I hate surprises, but deep down, you know, they will love the surprise. I justified <laughs> my ethical kind of <laughs> like un unethical lying behavior. I call it fibbing more than lying. Right. It was quite, I kind of enjoyed it. It was quite fun. And it kind of it felt, felt like a game of that game werewolf or mafia where you, you know, you're the werewolf and you have to convince everyone that you're not. So I kind of like turned it into a little bit of a game for myself. You didn't do a good know, job convincing people. Kind of like, <laughs> you gave it away by name of the game. Stuff happening. I think like there was enough doubt in, in everyone's mind going oh god what if it isn't what if it isn't what that if they is don't true. show up that is true i am for me yeah, yeah team then, <laughs> so when we did it they kind of gave them that it. little extra little bit of icing on top of yeah. it already no it worked incredibly it paid off. deep like, i watched the movie with toby for the first time and i was in pieces like this is a deep movie this isn't just mm. fan service which you know it partially is but like this is a movie that is about a, a coming of age like a acceptance mm -hmm. of loss acceptance of death Taking responsibility for your gifts and the God, like, I was gets torn it. open by the journey it. that Tom went on and that he was having to it was just like having to split with 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 his girlfriend and his best friend and sacrifice that in order. It's just it's the it's classic Peter Parker, but it felt totally fresh and totally reimagined like his origin, like Tom's origin story was happening in his third movie rather than his first. Like there's something so profound. So the film I feel stands alone without me and me and Toby showing up. I hope we enhance it, but like, you do. I think John yeah. and Tom <laughs> have doubt. made just something actually that is exceptionally moving, especially for young people. You know, I think it's, I think it's a beautiful film. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, it is highly emotional. God, you have some, those close ups yeah. of you, you know, with uh, Aunt May and then yeah. beyond and the whole coda, you know, if you haven't seen the movie, hold your ears. Because that ending. <laughs> to an interview with the three of them. <laughs> Ten <laughs> minutes in. In, in the Spider-Man. You know, so, so to play that must have been emotional too, I would think. Of course it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was emotional. Uh, You've cried as There I definitely said. was a sense for me as an actor that this oh, was glycerin. the last time that I could potentially don the suit. So a lot of that emotion oh, wow. came from the act of saying goodbye, which is one of the biggest themes throughout this film. So. You know, thankfully, I was really able to draw on my own experience and my own feelings in those moments. Um, but Dude, this film so also good. felt like a huge celebration. You know, this movie really is a celebration of three generations of cinema. Uh, so at times we would be getting into these scenes that were incredibly emotional, that, you know, they're very taxing. And I was so happy to be there that I had to go at it a different way and kind of go, wow, look at my life. Look what's happened to me. I'm working with... Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield, and we're telling this story, and I would get emotional at kind of how proud I was of the situation that we were in, and that what we were doing, and that I really believed in what we were doing. Um, so yeah, it was tough, but you know, anything hard is is, is worthwhile. Um, and you know, Amen. I was just happy to kind of really push myself and, and and to make this film, you know, more emotional than superhero films have been in the past. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so a lot of it was, I was drawing on my own kind of feelings as we went along. You know, that's something that I think Tom Holland was 100% correct about when teasing this film. He's like, a lot of people are thinking that this movie is just going to be like a lot of fun and excitement, but really it's going to be a really dark journey. I think a lot of us really weren't expecting that when we actually went into that movie <laughs> with what Andrew Garfield's talking about, of how it's not just purely fan service, that there really is a story at its core. And then for this question to segue into Aunt May, I'm like, yeah, I remember watching it for the first time. I wasn't even thinking like i wonder if toby and andrew like i thought it early on in the movie yeah. and i had that apprehension like what if they don't i was so in the moment and i think that's something this movie does so well is that you're so gripped by the immediacy and the terrors of what tom holland is experiencing at this time i'm not even thinking about yeah but it's toby and andrew <laughs> so yeah, when they, yeah. And when they do show up they they support it like he says it enhances it i would actually weirdly agree that the movie is monumental and historical for the fact that the three of them are in there however there is a version of this movie that could have been done without them being here absolutely and to me i mean like i think of scorsese and i'm like no that but that is cinema like what tom just said is like you know they wanted to make it like he's yeah. drawing on all this real experience and everybody else is coming at it with this very real intent and it all shines through the final product and it is one of the more emotional 
emotional and emotionally resonant and impactful superhero movies, partly because all of that life that went into it. So, like, it is cinema. <laughs> I feel like it's the essence of cinema yeah. right there. Yeah, Toby, this feels like a culmination. In fact, I, I did a little interview with Amy Pascal, and she described it that way. She said this movie is a culmination of 20 years, what began with you and your three and now going full circle here. Uh, is that the way you look at it too when you looked at this, that this is- He looks like, at it like that. You know, <laughs> Those paycheck but, negotiation. But what you well, I, I'll say I remember being on set and it was, I believe our last day, Andrew, and it was, uh, it was really amazing, and I had I had the awareness of this, you know, the the twenty years of history. But looking at um, Amy and Kevin and realizing that they've been there through all the different iterations, yeah, yeah it was good really point. powerful. Just personally, it was really powerful. It was powerful for me to be working with Andrew and Tom, and powerful in a in a legitimately moving, emotional way, and then to witness. Amy and Kevin and consider their journeys through all the films. It was, it was really impactful. Um, and, and yeah, I was, I was just grateful every day. I really, it was such a rich experience. And as the guys have touched on the kind of, um, sharing of something and the, the brotherhood of it, it was, it was just so rich, emotional. And I, I don't know. I, I'm not like sitting there conceptually thinking about that all the time, but I would have moments where that kind of stuff would hit me, you know, day to day. It was, it was just a beautiful kind of unfolding of this story and these relationships. So I was more just like in, in that, uh, on the day to day, but I'd have these like reflection moments, which were quite powerful and, and elegantly, woven ultimately because yeah. it's actually you think yeah. about taking 20 years of history and revisiting that and how do you how do you balance um all of these things and each each of our kind of series of films have you know they're the characters are we're playing the same character but they're also unique and and the the way those films and characters evolved in those films are unique and then to bring all of that together including um uh you know all of our super villains and and all of that it's it was pretty wild to witness the immensity of all of this history coming together and being put into what andrew is saying is this you know standalone worthwhile story um and and i too just wanted to say with with the coda of the movie i was really touched emotionally but also i just thought it had such a sweet elegance to it like that was mm. so amazing and I, I agree in terms of the origin story and the kind of coming of age or or you know tom your character stepping into this different kind of maturity and responsibility and all done with this like really sweet sad elegant touch it was it was mm. just Beautiful. I just love how they just pay it all to this other people. I like, know. <laughs> like, Toby can use a beer, be like, yeah, I, I started, started this, this shit. <laughs> um, and it all just comes back to me. And like what Andrew's talking about earlier, Tom's movie wouldn't exist if I didn't kick this off myself. <laughs> you know? If people weren't annoyed at my movies, we wouldn't have got the reboot that let us here. It is just kind of funny listening to Toby talk about it, though, because from hearing the rumors before there were like leaks actually coming out, but hearing just the rumors about it and, you know, watching the movie and just, uh, just me watching this interview i'm like this is surreal and trippy to me and i feel like if that was like that for him the whole time then he might not have been able to do his job for the film yes so like <laughs> here to be like yeah i would have random conceptual moments but it wasn't something i was constantly thinking about i'm like well good yeah because yeah. as an audience member i'm like freaking out at the just watching the interview <laughs> but i never even considered that journey for amy pascal and kevin feige that he was touching on like yeah. that is a fascinating one. You know, when we met Kevin Feige at the Spider-Man No Way Home premiere, thanks to Koi Jandro, I could have looked him in the eyes and asked him about that. Like, what's this emotionally feel like? He would not remember that I met him. Don't worry, you can ask him the next time, and then you know what he'll say? He'll say, why didn't you make that your first impression, <laughs> Greg? Talk to me about who I am. But no, I mean, I think especially Amy Pascal doesn't get enough credit for uh, At all. No, I feel like she gets a lot of crap that she maybe does not deserve. It's a remarkable uh, movie, the way they 
did this. I got a big shout out here to John Watts, who I had seen Top Car, and I think the first time I talked to you, Tom, it was with John, and when you had done the first Spider Man, and all. All I could do to do is talk about this little movie Cop Car that he did and think, wow, this guy's going somewhere. What was it like working with John on this film for you guys? Andrew and and, and uh, uh, Toby had not before. Obviously, Tom had. What was that experience like? It's so funny because what Toby just said about the kind of... I, in those moments of awareness where you realize you were, that we were uh, bringing in 20 years of history and then some into a frame every day that hugeness that we that i know that we only got a sense of in moments and i remember maybe the first time i got a sense of it where where i think we were on a scaffolding and like we were talking to <laughs> dr strange who wasn't actually there and tom turned to us and said there's something that doesn't feel quite right about this it feels a bit awkward or like we just kind of stood here and and both me and toby were like yeah this feels a little weird we feel a little odd and, and then in that moment john watts comes up the um the scaffolding goes that's the movie that's it we got it it's the it's <laughs> the film. This, is, this is the moment and we're all like <laughs> we're insane then <laughs> we weren't seeing what he was seeing which he then just showed us and it was just the three of us in our suits in the same frame and just how yeah. profoundly moving that is unto itself for spider-man fans the world over and i think it was at that point where i was like oh no this is gonna people are gonna like this movie a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, or th this this element of things but in regards to the bigness that toby was talking about it also mostly just felt very small like we were making cop car like we were huh interesting just doing an independent spider-man film and, and that's what uh, the, the tone of these films that tom and john have created together feel like uh, 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 Michael J. Fox, John Hughes, indie kind of um, small details, awkward, beautiful humor, proper, deep, intimate love stuff with huge scope, but like at the essence of it is just pure heart. And, and that's what it felt like with John. It felt like there was, I was just so overwhelmed wow. by how unperturbed he was by what he was trying to achieve. Like it was so big objectively but his his calmness his ability to allow actors to improvise to play and then for him to throw out wild ideas in the mix to let takes run and run and run right, to right. to give us time to really find what we were doing and to go down the wrong path to then find towards the new path the right path I was just incredibly impressed and actually just really grateful for the experience with 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 John mm. he mm -hmm. he's someone that he's a real actor's director and and it, and that is especially hard to feel in the midst of the machinery of um a film that does have this scope and i i know that tom will 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 be able to talk to that even even better than me that's something i i have to give john watts credit for because despite whatever you know negative feelings that i would have had towards and i think this is this would be applicable for a lot of people's opinion actually with the other two spider-man movies that tom holland started the acting was always really good oh, yeah. it was always great even if like the writing or the story itself was something that like obviously became a lot better for a lot of people ourselves included after watching no way home the acting was always like really great yeah, <laughs> yeah. there is that sense of intimacy and the little details like he yes. said even though yeah there is the, the spectacle that is a big part of those movies yeah when you're just with the characters it does feel i think a bit more authentically than maybe we give it credit for as you know some kind of yeah more intimate indie story we've seen great actors in bad movies <laughs> and do bad performances so it's not just about solely good casting you got to have a, the right director who knows how to guide you you know you got to bring those performances out of people yeah it's like we've seen uh chaos walking no. <laughs> <laughs> actually i haven't seen chaos walking so I, don't I, know if he, I don't even know if he does a good job with the movie Maybe or not the performances are great and it's just <laughs> everything else that isn't great so i was a little bit surprised by andrew garfield's answer especially when you're thinking about the pressure he must have been under yeah. like i would have had a panic attack every single day yeah, yeah. it does not feel like the hugest undertaking <laughs> yeah. in the entire universe yeah, yeah, yeah. john and i spoke yesterday for the first time since the film has been released and I think it took us so long because we needed time to just kind of let the dust settle. And then we spoke yesterday and, and, and the first kind of 10 minutes of our conversation was kind of like, we, we're both kind of in disbelief of what's happened and what we've achieved. You know, I'm talking to him like, I remember meeting you for, for the first time in my trailer. I was 18 years old 
and you were you had never directed a movie like this before and both of us hadn't a fucking clue what we were doing <laughs> we were both like I, I i was petrified he was petrified and then on this movie oh that's we were able beautiful to put our best foot forward go on the, go there day one <laughs> this is so beautiful <laughs> journey of growth um and it's just been one of those relationships that i've had that i will cherish forever you know john and i have no boundaries with each other you know we have no fear in telling each other how it is and being honest and i think when you make these kind of movies it's very important to make sure that you don't lose the heart and soul of why you started doing this in the first place and i think john watts was the perfect person to kind of keep that throughout the trilogy uh but for me as an actor huh. he's kind of he's like a gold mine he, he will let you do whatever you want until you've gone too far and then he'll reel you back in <laughs> and he'll always set you on the right track and He's someone that you can really trust. He's incredibly creative. You know, he never sacrifices quality for quantity. You know, like he is the kind of person that will shut a scene down and say, we're done for the day. We're going to pick this up tomorrow because it's not reaching my expectations. And that's happened a few times on this film and in the previous two films. So I've always really appreciated his, his bravery to say to the studio, I'm finished for the day. I'm not <laughs> shooting this scene until we come up with something better. Um, I think that's an incredible wow. quality and something I know I couldn't wow. have done. I would have been like, yeah, yeah, just we'll shoot four hours over until we figure it out. Don't tell me what to do. So, yeah, so I've always been a huge fan of John's and he's a great friend. And I'm so glad that you guys had just as an amazing experience with him as I have. I don't know about you, my appreciation back here for John Watts' film just like skyrocketed. <laughs> to be able to step in and be like, hey, this isn't working. And instead of exhausting ourselves further, we're just going to come back tomorrow with a better eye. Like that. That's that bold. takes some brass. That's, balls. Man. That's ballsy, man. What, is, what does he have on the Marvel higher <laughs> <laughs> can do that. I've never heard that insight of like, he came to my trailer because that's right, he was cast for Civil War before he ever met John Watts. For them to like meet up and both be like, we've never done something like this and we've had to lean on him before. <laughs> this is terrifying. Yeah. And we're stepping into like major shoes. This is Spider-Man. I've never even considered what that fear factor might actually be for them. Mm -hmm. uh, so to hear that and to see where they are now, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, it's like as much as like the celebration is usually pinpointed towards like the 20 years yeah. uh, and then, you know, the three of them coming together. And of course, we really want to hear what Andrew and Toby have to say because they're returning. Yeah, there's a big congratulations specifically specifically towards Tom Holland and John Watts that is absolutely well deserved and it's something that I feel like isn't really talked about I know like we've done a lot of talking about Spider-Man I and mean, we haven't really we talked, haven't about talked about that ourselves John, John Watts that, we're that dicks. much we we're are terrible we, human beings we are unappreciated you guys earned this <laughs> How is yeah. John Watts? I have to ask you Toby I'm sure people are wondering so what was it like these costumes uh the costume designs it's you know iconic what was it like getting back into that suit <laughs> um, well, you know, what, once you get through the process of, you know, really peeling it onto your body, um, uh, it, it was, I don't know, a lot of things. It was uncomfortable getting it on and then, and then it's a goof and then it also has a sort of, um, Empowering. <laughs> you know, I guess a sort of a power in a sense, because it brings me back into that character. It really does. Mm -hmm. um, th there's so much affinity for this character. It means so much to so many people that, you know, once the sort of goofiness of, of being in <laughs> uh, Lycra or spandex, you know, once that goes away, you're like, oh, wow, this is, this is cool. This is that sort of um, it's a mantle. A responsibility but a but a blessing like something that i get to do that i'm grateful for and so that was fun but but honestly like being with these guys it really was um just a, a much much richer experience than i anticipated or that i could really even express in words i i just I know that's not the question about the suit, but but <laughs> but the suit is it just to get to be there with these guys in their suits and whether it was like dancing around or playing around in scenes and improving or um, you know feeling that kind of sense of service to each other um, and the character being in service to humanity it it really 
gives a certain perspective and then and then the the kind of trust and openness that I had with these guys and uh, John and Amy and everyone it it just brought this really open I don't know I just felt super safe and like we were all on the same team and all in support of each other and it just brought out this this yeah I don't know how to put it other than just like this really loving uh fun creative experience that um that I was just like sitting in gratitude every day uh hmm. which is not always the case when you're working on something you know <laughs> even just from the standpoint of like trying to figure out what you're doing and and it all it wasn't without its challenges but it it all just unfolded the way it needed to or whatever just it had a sense of this kind of destiny to it as well so i guess the suit was the the doorway to that <laughs> that's cool it's, that's it's great i have to mention the that's theatrical great. experience here which has been threatened and and people say oh it's the beginning of the end and everybody's going to sit on their couch and watch movies at home and things and this movie is almost single-handedly being credited for proving <laughs> that that is not true that 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 movies exist in movie theaters the way they were designed by their filmmakers to be seen and this is the perfect example of a movie that it as Andrew Garfield promotes anyway. his Netflix movie. <laughs> <laughs> the experience of watching this movie is again, it's like unlike anything I've seen in a long time. That that kind of feeling you get, and uh, and it's got to be preserved. And so, all three of you are here, part of the reason why movies are going to go on to give me hope. <laughs> you know, for this, Tom, Tom, uh, you in particular, you, you might go on and do more Spider Man. I'm going to try to get a scoop here. Uh, That's the way to do it. <laughs> Just come right out and say it. I, the, the truth is, the, the truthful answer, and I've done a whole press tour where all I do is lie. Yeah. The truth is, and you're not going to like the truth, I don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. I don't know the answer to that You're the werewolf! You're the werewolf! It was as special as an turn. experience could ever be. <laughs> Sharing the screen with these guys. You know, playing Spider-Man can be quite an alienating experience because you know we're <laughs> you know the three blokes we're the only three blokes who have done it so to share that with you two and for it to have been such a wonderful experience of which i have such amazing memories i don't know there's part of me that feels like it's the perfect time to 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 jump off the building and swing off into the sunset and neck and let the next lucky young kid come in uh to to don the suit no <laughs> i know i love this character and i know that i am not ready to say goodbye but if it is time for me to say goodbye then i will do so proudly knowing that i have achieved everything i wanted to with this character uh and sharing it with these boys will be forever one of the most special experiences of my career so if it's time it's time if it's not it's not but at the at the moment i don't know gosh Darn it, Tom. Don't you know the Spider-Man rule? You're supposed to run it into the muck until suddenly you do a Spider-Man movie that is not well received. Yes. And then Sony panics and goes, we need to start we over again. We need to reboot this. You're ignoring the blueprint that has been clearly set forth by your coast. Come on. But no, in all sincerity, I feel like we're just getting started with this portrayal of Literally. Peter Parker. Literally. Like, I love the way that movie ended. I'm like, oh my god, we finally got into this point where I've been wanting him to get to. You know, like how I Andrew Garfield said earlier, it's like we were watching his origin tale unfold over the course of three movies. Why would you stop now? <laughs> like, now let's see the, the app post origin, how this all goes. Like, there's such a rich story to mine here. Oh, yeah. Like, I feel like if you just brought in a new Spider Man, I'd be like, what? No. You, like, what happened to him with the blue suit? A, yeah. All that new stuff? What's going on? You would need to, like, have someone then replace the Tom Holland version and continue that same story. It wouldn't be like, let's just do another Spider Man story again, you know? The way he talks about lately it seems like there's a part of him that is ready to you know hang up the suit at the same time though it's like as a as an audience member i'm like come no no just take a take a rest yeah take some time take Give the time you need tom period. take the time you need but hey you come back to us <laughs> <laughs> in six months to a year you'll have a hankering for more peter Parker. Yeah. well we certainly uh can't wait to see what you do next and uh, all three of you and again congratulations uh Andrew, on all your other films this year, which are great, and I'm happy to say I've seen all of them in a theater, uh, and uh, they're all different. And all of you are big champions of independent filmmaking, too, so I loved what you said about this felt like uh, an independent film in its own way, even on the scale that it was being produced. And, and you're all big champions 
of that uh, uh, throughout your career. So um, keep it going. And thanks for joining us here and talking this rare opportunity to see three Spider-Men together. This is so exciting. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Pete. Well done. I felt like Andrew Garfield was slowly getting <laughs> so slowly sinking, sinking down, down below yeah. the frame. <laughs> He's going to ooze yeah. out to the interview after a while. All right, guys. Well, that was amazing. Amazing Spider-Men. Heartwarming. <sighs> guys, what'd you think? What was your biggest takeaway from that? Um, please, you know, leave your thoughts down below. We'll catch you guys soon. Thank you for being here.